And good afternoon. Welcome to Life Fun Rehearse. My name is Matt Delvecchio, specializing in life transitions, downsizing in the senior living industry. And I'm Corey Sirota, clinical social worker and psychotherapist, specializing in grief and loss. Coming right up. On the first half, we're going to be talking to a notary about why so many people these days are updating their wills, powers of attorney, and other legal documents. So important that I really do, although it's one of those, I don't want to talk about it, we need to talk about it. Yes, we but do. before we talk about that, I seriously heard you on the radio. I don't know. Every time I turned on the radio, Matt, you were on the radio. Um, I know for sure a couple of times on Andrew Carter, and you were talking about a very serious issue, the senior residences. They're loosening up, loosening up the rules a bit. What say you? Yeah, um, a lot of calls this week, both from families. Talked to a lot of families that are quite happy that they're opening up some of the senior, senior residences. And I'm, what I'm referring to now is not the CHSLDs, but what we refer to as the RPAs. These are the Autonomous Living Senior Residences. So that's been good for families. I have talked, though, to uh, many of the owners and managers of some of these senior residences, and, and many of them are supporting the loosening of the rules. But I have to tell you, there are uh, quite a few that are concerned and a little bit nervous because... They've been actually very good. Very few cases of COVID or no COVID mm -hmm. cases in these uh, autonomous living senior residences. So uh, just a shout out to all the families. I know everyone's excited to to uh, to see moms and dads and grandparents, which is great. But um, they're asking everyone, please, to be vigilant, responsible, keep your two meters apart, wear your masks. And uh, uh, what they don't want is, is to have to um, deal with another outbreak of any COVID cases. So good on all those people. Families, glad to see your... Your, your, uh, your parents and grandparents again, and thank you to all the frontline workers in all the senior residences, including the CHSLDs. And Corey, I have to start off by saying Happy Mother's Day, Corey. Thank you so much, Matt. I really appreciate it. I'm sending Happy Mother's Day to your other half. I'm allowed to say better half. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, <laughs> the lovely Stephanie and uh, all uh, family uh, related. But let me Thank say you. in general, today is Mother's Day. So I want to begin by giving a shout out to all moms out there. Whether you're a mom, grandma, stepmom, mother-in-law, moms-to-be, a bereaved mom, or someone who plays the role of mom, we're sending you warm wishes today and every day. Really, thanks so much for what you are doing so well. Speaking of doing things so well, we're going to meet two unique moms on the second half of the show. Uh, they are, despite these, circum these unique circumstances, they are doing some very unique things to navigate Mother's Day. So that's coming up after the 4.30 news. I yeah, can't wait to hear that. And happy Mother's Day to everyone. Of course, we can't forget about those moms that are no longer with us. I know a lot of family members are thinking of those moms. So um, we wish you all the very best. And of course, Corey, I have to do a special shout out to my mom who listens in religiously every Sunday from Oakville where she lives in Ontario on the iHeart Radio app. You know, she was born and raised in, in the Benny Farm area in NDG and right next to Steinberg's right there at the Cavendish and, and Sherbrooke. So Ma, uh, happy Mother's Day to you and I'm sure uh, one of the other bigger fans, uh, Corey, <laughs> right. for your mom. I think there's a competition going on between your mom and my mom about who listens more. So, um, but we, we appreciate both of you listening in and uh, th thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Mom. If I'm assuming you're listening. I love you, and uh, I was very, very happy to uh, see you, for, albeit six feet away yesterday, um, because you look beautiful, and may you always smile the way you do right now. Oh, very nice. Uh, all right. You know, this coronavirus has, has created a reality check for many people and it has a lot of people reflecting on their family situation. And as a result, there's been a surge of people adjusting their wills and powers of attorney and other legal documents these days. So fortunately, we have notary Nadia Dirigi on the line to discuss this issue. Nadia. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Welcome to Life Unrehearsed. And we first have to also wish you a happy Mother's Day. Thank you very much. And not just a happy Mother's Day. I understand a little birdie told me, I think it's your son's birthday. Is it today? It, it was on Friday. <laughs> on he Friday. turned nine. Nine years old. Okay. Two young children, a son and a daughter. So thank you for taking time on uh, your busy Mother's Day. Uh, you know, we've been hearing that there's been a recent uh, surge in, in the adjustments or modifications or creating these wills and, and powers of attorney. Are you seeing that at, at your end? Absolutely. I am seeing that. So uh, I have been seeing and receiving a higher number um, of requests than, than usual. So clients who either have wills who want to revise them absolutely and urgently, 
or, or clients who maybe have put off uh, doing their will all of a sudden absolutely want to come in and, and get it finalized and get it done. Uh, so we have been seeing that, and I think you brought up a good point, I think, when people are faced with uh, situations such as this pandemic, the natural reflex is to want to protect themselves and protect their loved ones. Um, and so we're seeing that um, in people's lives. We're seeing in their reactions that this is one of the things that they want to get done, uh, and they want to get it done quickly. Fair enough. Uh, well, there's a huge sense of urgency, I imagine, right now. There's a lot of confusion uh, for myself and for many, many others in terms of the definitions of some of the legal documents we're talking about. So um, can you clarify, what's a will, power of attorney, protection mandate? Sure. So I'll try, I'll try my best. Um, <laughs> it can be confusing. Um, and I get this question quite a lot. Um, the way I like to explain it to clients, um, an easy way to differentiate between the power of attorney, the protection mandate, the will, is to ask yourself, when will I need to use this document? So the timing and when you're going to use it. So, for example, if we start with the power of attorney, we are uh, in the power of attorney naming and appointing somebody right now, so in the present moment, uh, to assist us with specific tasks. Um, so we're fully capable right now of understanding what we need and, and who we want to appoint, uh, but maybe physically we're not going to be present or we can't be present to carry out certain actions. So right now we are appointing somebody for us. So, for example, or the more, more common example is, um, somebody who is appointing their spouse uh, as their power of attorney for banking needs, so somebody who maybe can't leave the house, somebody with mobility issues. Um, another example would be someone who's away on business, um, and they, you know, they may appoint their business partner to represent them in a sales transaction if they're not going to be present. So that's for the power of attorney. Um, when we're talking about a protection mandate, um, it's a little bit different because we're not appointing somebody for right now. We're saying in anticipation of my incapacity, so if ever my doctor declares me incapable of making my own decisions, I'm appointing somebody to make those decisions for me. But it's for the future. Uh, it allows us today to appoint somebody um, in advance uh, to make our daily decisions for us. And then we have the will. So the will is one that, that people are, are more, com uh, more familiar with. Um, and with a will, what we're doing is we're really putting down on paper instructions for the transfer of our assets, uh, sometimes for the, the care of our, our minor children, um, after we pass away. So it's, again, here we're not talking about present moment. We're talking about future. We're saying in anticipation of this, so in anticipation of my passing, I'm writing down how I want my assets to be transferred and who I want my assets to go to. So right. those are the major differences with those three documents. No, very good explanation. Thank you. It's, 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 it, uh, there's so much. People assume, hey, I've got my power of attorney and I'm good to go for all decision-making powers. So um, we've got Nadia Dirigi, a notary, talking to us about um, the surge in wills and some of these legal documents coming up. So understanding that the will and um, uh, this could be done for future decisions. The power of attorney, I think you explained that well, it's it's temporary. Mm -hmm. um, it is not a permanent permanent thing. And then the protection mandate is when uh, this becomes a permanent decision um, where you're taking over decision-making powers, uh, usually in cases uh, uh, where someone is inept, if, if we understand, right? In all cases of Alzheimer's and so on. Correct. All right. You know, notaries have really had to go out of their way these days in these uh, crazy times. And, and uh, Nadia, you yourself personally has had to go a little bit out of the way. And we're going to hear just some of the stories that notaries, uh, what they're doing to uh, have to meet some of the client's needs in these uh, very tricky times. But Welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. I'm Corey Sirota with my co-host Matt Del Vecchio and we are talking to notary Nadia Dirigi. She is giving us some very, very important information about um, keeping our affairs in order and why and what and how. Nadia, I know that we are living in a bizarre time right now in terms of social, social distancing and in order to... Uh, uh, officially mark any of these documents. We need signatures. We need witnesses. So um, I understand that you have had to go to some pretty interesting lengths to uh, during this pandemic to get those kinds of um, signatures to happen. Can you share some of those with us? Sure. So uh, notaries are, we are actually on the list of essential services in Quebec. 
Um, and so um, we have, um, I, I know some of my colleagues, myself included, have had to get creative um, in finding solutions to, to getting things done for urgent files. So when I think of urgent files, I think of real estate transactions. Um, and one of the first real estate transactions that I had in March uh, was a young family buying a home uh, from an elderly gentleman. Um, and this gentleman had just moved into a senior's residence. And we couldn't postpone the date of the transaction uh, for numerous reasons. The family needed to move, uh, and uh, the vendor needed the funds for his care. The issue was that I couldn't avail myself of uh, electronic signature because he didn't have access to Internet uh, or to a cellular phone. Hmm. And so, um, you know, I had to mail him the documents in advance for his review, and uh, ultimately, um, I presented myself uh, at the residence on the sidewalk uh, while he was on the other side of the glass door. Mm. And we read the document together. Um, he showed me his ID through the glass. Um, it was surreal. Um, but we got it done, and the family is safely in their new home. And, you know, he got his funds, and he's safe. So, um I think it was worth it. <laughs> Thank goodness. Oh, good on you. We're talking with notary Nadia Dirigi, uh, just talking about some of the links their uh, notaries are having to go through these days. And one of the things I'm sure you're constantly preaching, however, um, unfortunately, people um, aren't getting things done and putting their legal documents in order as much as they should be. Nadia, why, what are the benefits of preparing in advance? Well, planning in advance simply allows us to, to maintain a certain level of control in our lives when things get out of control. So when things uh, such as our health uh, you know, prevent us from, from being able to speak for ourselves and make our decisions, we will have already uh, put these, uh, you know, these wishes down on paper. So it's really a protection uh, for us, uh, for our future. It avoids leaving our care, leaving um, other decisions uh, to, to the civil code, uh, to family members. Um, it really it allows us uh, to make those decisions ourselves. Um, and I think that's one of the important points you're saying. I always ask, okay, if you don't do it, well, now you're pretty well leaving it in the hands of the government to make decisions on behalf of your family, right? If that's what I understand. Yeah, you're leaving it up to chance. I mean, depending on what it is, if it's uh, someone passing away, we're going to look at the civil code and, and see what stipulations are in there and, and who's going to inherit what and in what capacity. Uh, we're talking about a protection mandate and we don't have one of those. Well, then we're leaving that to chance as well. You know, anyone in the family can step forward to, to take care of us. It may not necessarily be the person that we would have appointed. Um, so, so there's a number of risks that we take when we, we just leave things uh, to chance and we don't, we don't take matters into our own hands. Um, I hear you. Uh, uh, speaking as a grief counselor, um, let's get real. Hmm. Why do people put things off? Well, I think in general, you know, you may know more than me, but I think in general people are afraid to think of themselves as vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, I think, um, you know, facing that vulnerability obviously takes uh, some courage. Um, I also think, though, that people have a false notion that writing your will is an overly complicated process, and so they get overwhelmed that way, um, and so they just put it off to another day. Yes. Um, you know, or they may say, well, I don't have all the answers right now, so I'm, I'm going to wait until I have all the answers, and then I'm going to get it done. All, all legitimately understandable reasons, but we're also talking about, as you mentioned so clearly, the benefits of, of why we want to prepare in advance. We don't want to think about it. Nobody ever wants to think about their own mortality or incapacitation, yet not doing it not doing these things and preparing for them, you leave the family, as I've seen far too many times, in a real crisis and at a very vulnerable time. So let me ask you again, why do you think people should be doing it now? Well, I think now's the perfect time. Uh, people may have a little bit more time to be thinking about these things. Um, I think the situation has also put in front of us the fact that we are, all, we are vulnerable, all of us, um, and we're all in this together. And so I think it's a responsibility that we have as members of the community, as, as members of a family, um, to really make sure that things are in order so that we, um, you know, we, we protect those that we love and we protect ourselves. So I, I think don't be afraid to contact your notary or your lawyer. 
look into the process, get the information. Now's a great time. You know, we're all home on our laptops. <laughs> Good time yeah. to look this up. It is the right time. It's time to reflect, and many families are, and you're absolutely right, Nadia. It's Nadia Dirigi, notary, giving us some great advice. And just for clarification, I see this in my world, in the senior living world, Nadia, so often people um, have their will, and then they often say, I have that power of attorney that you were referring to, and they think everything's good. But when it comes time to taking decision-making power uh, uh, of, a, of a parent or a loved one, they realize that, wait a minute, I actually needed this protection mandate. Mm -hmm. And you could put that in a legal document, but there's actually a process that has to take place for you to take the decision-making powers. Can you just briefly explain what that process is? Sure. So uh, for a protection mandate to be, to be used, it has to be enacted. And so your incapacity has to be declared by your doctor and by a social worker. Um, so um, it's different in the power of attorney in that the person that you've appointed can't just take it and, and use it and, and, and take over your life, so to speak. So with a, power, with a protection mandate, um, we're really going to verify that you have, um, you know, that you no longer have your capacity, that you are in need of this legal representation. Um, and so if you are a family member and you notice that your parent um, is perhaps in a situation where their health requires them to be represented, you may want to contact their doctor, or if they have a social worker, contact the social worker, or contact their notary and ask the question, is this the right time to be enacting the, the protection mandate? How do I go about doing this? And that could be, that's termed homologation, correct? Is that a, the term? That's that correct, people? yes. Okay. So you have um, given us a lot of information, and I think very, very important information. You've also made a pretty uh, less de well demystified in my terms around so it's a phone call to a notary to start to get this process going like I want people to understand that it's not as complicated as they think well it's it's not I mean I think people get scared off when they hear oh there's a there is a court proceeding what they have to understand is they have to put themselves in the shoes of the person who's going to be declared incapacitated so if I for example am going to be declared incapacitated I would want to know about it so people don't need to be afraid. They just need to reach out and get the information. We, we just want to make sure that this person is in need of this assistance. We're going to take the necessary steps um, and, and, you know, just reach out to the professionals to get the help that you need and, and allow them to, to take you through it step by step. It's not as complicated as you think. So such good advice because we've seen it time and time again, um, especially when we're dealing with even a, a sale of a home. And, and if someone, uh, an owner of a home is, is, is declared and not able to, well, you can't sell that home. That, that uh, you must go through that process. And homologation process, now it could take what, a couple of months, three months? It uh, could take a couple of months. I mean, right now, um, our courthouses are not fully operational. <laughs> so with the coronavirus, things are taking a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, but it, it can take several months. Okay, all right. Nadia, thank you so much. Nadia Dirigi, notary extraordinaire. We really appreciate you coming on the air here, and, and uh, we want to wish you again happy Mother's Day and a happy birthday to your son. Thank you so How much How can for people reach you if they want to reach you? Um, they can reach me by phone at 514-484-2788 uh, or on our website, lamardirigi.com. All right, thank you so much. Corey, what do we have coming up?